The CEO of CBS was asked specifically about Star Trek Legacy, and he basically said what we've been saying for quite a while. Welcome to Sidetrack, your sci-fi TV and movie channel. I say he basically said it. I will tell you what he actually said, and we have to read between the lines a little bit, and we're going to sort of translate a couple of the words he used. But in a recent interview, the CEO of CBS, his name is Cheeks. I'm sorry if that amuses me, but I'm a child. Um, was basically, he, he did a very political answer and he really didn't answer specifically. What he did say, though, was that Star Trek is planned many years in ahead. And, and that is something I've said in a couple of videos previously when I was talking about Star Trek Legacy. That there is a plan for Star Trek Legacy, but it needs to come at the right time for a couple of different reasons that Cheeks uh, went into that I'll sort of, again, translate and add a little bit more detail to but as we've said many times on this channel, Star Trek Legacy is if not when. Um, for one, the CBSC CEO did not say, look, we've got no plans for Legacy. He didn't say that. He could have done. He could have said there is no plan for Legacy. But he didn't. Why? Because there is a plan for Legacy. What he did talk about was that Star Trek needs to come at a certain cadence. And that means, you know, like the rate in which Star Trek is made. He did make the point of, that's not about cutbacks. It's a little bit, it's a little bit about cutbacks. Um, but he said, no, it's about, you know, we cannot drop all of these great TV shows at once. So what does he mean? Well, partly he is talking about um, us getting bored of Star Trek. It's happened before. One of the reasons they think we had such a hiatus of Star Trek was because um, Enterprise was not particularly popular. Now, that's not really true. It was quite a popular show, but it was also a very expensive show. Now, what you have to realise is when they're talking about the popularity of a TV show and how we get fatigue of certain TV shows, they're not talking about the hardcore fans. They're not really talking about us. They're not talking about the Trekkies, Gators and all this sort of thing for the different sci-fi genres. What they're talking about is the larger audience, right? So regular hardcore fans equates to about a third of the audience of Star Trek. A third of the audience consider themselves Trekkies. Two thirds of the audience are more casual. They will dip in and out. Now it's the two thirds, which is a big number, of TV shows that sort of, there is a little bit of um, a fashion that goes on, there's ebbs and flows. So what I mean by that is certain genres are popular and then they aren't so popular. And you see this with everything. You see this with like the WWE and wrestling, that it's very popular for a bit and then it sort of ebbs off, and then it's very popular. Um, but you get that with rom-coms and all this sort of thing. There are periods where it's popular and periods where it's not so popular. The problem is the bulk of the audience, the two thirds that's the more casual viewer, sort of comes and goes with that popularity. So while sci-fi is popular, more casual viewers blah, blah, blah. So what he's basically saying there, that, that there is an element of fatigue, but it's with that casual viewer. We could have a new Star Trek series almost every week and we would watch it. Um, but... That's only a third of the audience and you can't run a successful franchise off a third of the audience. So they have to pace out when things come out. They need it to be often enough that people don't forget about it and don't get bored waiting. But it needs to be um, enough time between series that people build up a bit of excitement and a bit of interest towards something. There has to be a bit of momentum built up towards a new series, for example. Now, that's what they're doing currently with Legacy. And what are they doing? I've talked about this in several videos before, but basically what they're doing is they are trying to build up an element of momentum and an element of anticipation. At the moment, what they're trying to do is get fans to do all the work for them through social media, etc., and build up that excitement. They want to, us to start like, where is Legacy? Where is Legacy? And when it gets to a certain point, they will announce. So, he basically said that in his own words uh, that that's what he means by the 
cadence. He also did mention um, about dropping premiere um, TV shows all at once. And what he means by that is expensive TV shows all at once. Now, even though he can argue till the cows come home that Paramount is not um, cutting back on Star Trek, which he called one of the most important, most significantly important franchises for Paramount and specifically Paramount Plus. But the truth is Paramount are having to cut back on everything at the moment. Until new owners come in, really, they're having to cut back significantly. I'm being told there's an element with Paramount at the moment that they need to have a cash revenue, they need to have a cash reserve, and that is partly to do with the sale. Now, the sale is a little bit different from a straight sale where, you know, you're actually selling the, the show, you know, the, the, the entire um, um, buildings and everything. What they're doing is the people that own the majority share um, are decided they want to sell. So um, a new owner will come in, but it's like a de facto owner. They will only be the owner in terms of owning the most shares. Now, that for reasons I don't understand, but a business person's basically explained this to me. <laughs> um, they need a cash reserve. Um, it's to do with paying wages and things, I think. Um, or that they need to show as a business that they have a certain cash reserve before the sale can go through or the, or the, or the shares. You know, they need to prove as well that the shares are actually worth what they say they're worth. And there's all sorts of stuff going on here. But they need a cash reserve. So one of the things is they're having to limit they're having to sack a bunch of people which we've seen and but they're also cutting budgets back significantly so we know that across the board except for maybe things like the new yellowstone series and maybe star trek to be fair we don't know for certain but across the board everywhere else paramount are telling creators that they're going to have to cut anything up to 30 percent off their current budgets so that's again what he means by that. We we cannot produce too many Star Trek shows at once. And you could argue that there's been too many Star Trek shows in the last couple of years. So we're waiting on Legacy still for that. I have told you and dropped exclusively in first that there is a deal actually between um, Paramount and Sky. Um, sorry, Amazon. Um, that when the new series of Legacy does come, that Legacy will... Um, appear on Prime in some way. I have been told that deal is very similar to the Picard series deal, whereas basically it'll appear on um, Paramount first and then it will also appear on Amazon and the Amazon pay a certain element of the um, production costs. Now, that is again to do with mitigating costs, but it's also about getting the franchise onto multiple platforms to increase the popularity. They don't want it just on Paramount. They want it on other platforms to draw people towards Paramount, the home of Star Trek. So that's why it's gone on Netflix for Prodigy. That's why the movies have gone over onto um, Max. It's to keep Star Trek in the mindset of the general population and to draw people towards Paramount. So, again... He sort of alluded to that a little bit in the interview. What does this mean for Legacy? Really, it just confirms again what we've been saying on this channel for a while. And we've been called liars. And we've had a few comments on people going, I'm going to ask Terry Matthias when I go on the cruise. Um, that yes, Star Trek Legacy is not currently an active um, development. But it is coming. And I'm going to say to you what I say to all of the doubters. Do you really think executives over at Paramount would have allowed Terry Metalis to have that ending of Picard Season 3 if there wasn't a serious intention to eventually do Star Trek Legacy or whatever it'll be called? We call it Star Trek Legacy, but it could be called anything, let's be honest. At some point, that will happen. I, um, My understanding is that they want that to be with Terry Metalis, but they are more than happy to go without him if necessary. And that um, this will actually probably be announced at some point this year, after Discovery and after Section 31 movie is sort of wrapped up. I'm being told actually Legacy will probably follow the active development period and filming for starting on um, Academy, which is any time now. So, get ready. Star Trek Legacy is if, not when. I keep telling you, and that's not just because the sources that I have um, are telling me this. Your common sense should really tell you this as well. 
This is one of those times I actually could have guessed this. But luckily, because I have a couple of people who speak to me about these things, I don't have to. But guys, get to the comments and tell me what you think. Is Star Trek Legacy definitely happening? Obviously, we've got the whole issue of the new owners and that could change things. But really, I don't think it will. But what do you think? Get in the comments. As always, if you are new to the channel, please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. It really helps us out. You'll never miss any of our new videos. Also, you can go to patreon.com forward slash sidetrack where most of our videos do premiere first. Go check it out. As always, please stay safe and I'll see you next time.